Hey everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play. Is this, this was the first Roblox are we, for me as a kid? Are, to a very spiritual adventure. Are we now. in Abe's Odyssey? No, we're not in Abe's Odyssey. We're in Cosmo Canyon. What the fuck? Come yeah, to the knowledge. Him? Stay for the bonfire. <laughs> welcome to Bugenhagen. Bugenhagen has always got to sound like either German. a beer or a, a brand of ice cream. It sounds like a German ice cream. Or it could just be a German ice cream, yes. What flavor of Bugenhagen do you want? Uh, uh, I want life stream flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I want agony as a planet. It fills me up with spirit energy, it does. Uh, do you want? Do you also want a Bugenhagen beer? It does sound like a beer, too. You're right. Now, you said this is uh, your first roadblock. Yeah, I got. Yeah, me and my sister got stuck here in a case just by like being underleveled and not right. really understanding the whole system. Because I think I told you this before, 7 was my first Final Fantasy. Okay. So it's like me learning all this shit the first time around, and I got stuck in that fucking cave. Like, fuck me, I'm stupid. I remember having a hard time with the spiders. The stingers. Yeah, they were kind of what did it. Yeah, they're, uh, they're jerks. Because like I said, back then, I knew nothing of where to find beta, yeah. where to get all the good enemy skills and shit. Totally fair. Plus, that asshole wouldn't let me out of town. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, one thing I didn't show off, because I have hindsight... Is that if you attempt to drive your buggy beyond this, Coswell Canyon, it breaks, down. it breaks down. And there's nothing stopping you from walking on foot. <laughs> but uh, you don't want to do that because it's slow. Oh, yeah. there is absolutely a reason you can't go on foot. Yeah, try to go Try to go to Nibelheim. You can't pass the uh, river. Hindsight is indeed 2020. Yeah, and so fucking, if you're trying to go for a 100% playthrough, like true 100%, where you do everything, you can't have the buggy break down. Because if the buggy breaks down, you miss an opportunity to get a, spe a specific co Fort Condor item. Oh, for wow. when you backtrack to Fort Condor for the 67th time. Right, if you're ever going to do that. Because now, because I think one of the items that you can get now is the hey, wait, Johnny. Is the Super Bowl. Oh, fuck, I hope you go back to see that again. That's oh. the Glacier map. Which one? The map on the... The, the, the Turtles the Paradise the fire. One? Yeah, look at it again real fast. See? Oh, yeah, you're right. Fucking, <laughs> fucking reuse assets. <laughs> this will be trade. <laughs> Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's lemon flavored. Beware of straight Gyguses. What are what are <laughs> Gyguses? Hey, what's the love for the gay Gyguses, huh? The gay Gyguses? Yeah, we got straight Gyguses and there's no gay Gyguses here. I imagine the, I imagine sexuality is a big thing among Gyguses. Gay Gyguses, Gagus. <laughs> Gagus. Gagus. <laughs> Gagus Khan. Okay. Gagus Khan. <laughs> now you see that window over there that has the green marker, which means you can usually go into it. We can't because the red tape says so. Fuck. You get full clear material behind there. Yeah, which I don't ever use. I don't use it myself, but I do use Shield and Ultima if I feel like it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, materials that I'm not entirely sure why it's there, given that Cure 3 already does more than enough. Like, don't you, don't you hate it when red when a red rope impedes your pro your progression? Hey, I mean, I want to respect boundaries. <laughs> you know, I don't go to well, a store. Back. I got shit to do. Yeah, there's a, you know, I go to a GameStop and, like, the counter's behind the red rope. <laughs> I don't want to go behind the rope. That's illegal. I'm gonna go to jail. I wanna buy something! You can't go past the red rope. What? Arrest that man for game crimes. <laughs> game crimes. <laughs> you got angry at a game. Twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> Here you go. I, th I thought a game crime would. Is that Videl? No, no, no. <laughs> some of the colors game. I see yeah. what you mean. Yeah, there's two Turtles Paradise Flyers here. This is a, this one's got some pretty good weaponry here. The power's like 39 to 40, give or take. Yeah. But again, it, if you really feel more comfortable using the um, double growth weapons, that's fine. And you also get several armless here for everybody, which is a nice little upgrade, all, the, all things considered. <laughs> <laughs> the phone's like, he's right, you know. <laughs> yeah, very, you're, tra you're trading in power insightful. for the, uh, the the double growth. And as Matt said earlier, if you want to just focus on AP growth, you, you're more than fine to stick with, like, Force Dealer and all that. I always go to Butterfly Edge because I, I always get Butterfly Edge here. And I like the, the double links uh, for uh, combinations and shit. I avoid. I try to avoid it with Aerith because she gets a four slot weapon growth, four slot boss, uh, four slot double growth weapon from the boss. And then it, <laughs> I had this Jet shot Mark Three. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is a little bounce balls over here too. <laughs> That's a great track, by the way. I don't know what he's talking about. Because every time there's an NPC that tells you this, I put it here somewhere. It's like, oh, cool, hidden item. <laughs> now there is a t there's a dude you can talk about uh, talk here somewhere. I forget where it was. Uh, no, I think it's the mechanic that fixes the doom buggy for you if it breaks down. He says that he left an elixir here somewhere, and you can get that elixir without ever talking to him. So, Bugenhagen. 
interesting use of machinery in a friggin' giant, giant ass mountain like this. And yeah, Bugenhagen's like the best of both worlds. He doesn't mind the spiritual. He loves the spiritual and the mechanical. Yep. Like a boomer who actually gets with the ages. <laughs> <laughs> I always took it like he's on some sort of like floating apparatus because uh, we're kind of jumping ahead here, but Bugenhagen is a really old dude that has no legs. He just kind of floats. Yeah, I would, yeah. I, at first I was imagining fart propulsion, but... Fart propulsion? Yeah, just, you I mean, know, he constantly farts. Yeah. He is old. He's MP and HP planet. Plus. You, you may not need MP Plus, but, I, but the HP Plus is something worth investing in if you want to. If you need to bloat the number yeah. easily, yeah. Because back then, John's idea of getting max stats was just putting on a lot of HP pluses. Guilty. I did it too. <laughs> you know. I want to see four nines, goddammit. Exactly. <laughs> or you want to uh, find a way to easily manipulate all lucky sevens. HP pluses are usually the way of doing that. I'm stuck. Help. <laughs> Fucking uh, put on two HP pluses that caps out your... Uh, what was it? There was a strategy back in the day where... If you're fighting Emerald Weapon, you put on two HP pluses that had enough AP on it so that it maxes your stats out, and that character only had two materia on, so that when Emerald Weapon does Air Tame Storm, it brings your HP down to all sevens, which triggers all lucky sevens, and then you just go to town for a minute, and then the Kokai runs off, and then he gets stomped. Right. So this is Bugenhagen? This is Bugenhagen. This is, uh, this is Red Thirteen, so sure we call him Nanaki, that's his real name, is his grandfather. Or so they say. I don't see the resemblance. <laughs> Grandfather. I don't remember having a lion as a kid. <laughs> I did fuck your mom, though. Lost my legs, it cost me. <laughs> oh, she was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, she didn't take them. Her father found Your father found out, and I got the shit kicked out of me. So, uh, uh, what you fuck you, one lion. <laughs> what, would you, uh, what, would you, uh, what would you categorize Boonhagen as? A, geezer. As a, as a geezer? Like it's just like a like a job description. Is it mystic? Oh, I would I would a say philosopher, a scholar, necromancer, necromancer. <laughs> well, he does go to the world with. He's death. very in touch with the planet, right? Like he's talking about right now, like hearing the the cries of the planet, which like, we can hear right now. This this sound effect I hear actually just scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Yeah, I hear the planet whisper. It's dark in here. <laughs> Just think, one day we may be reincarnated in the future, and we gotta deal with Waterworld. <laughs> the sound, the sound effects coming out kind of reminds me of Earthbound. Uh, from like the opening, just in general. Just in general, yeah. Oh, sorry, my water wasn't boiling. Uh, according to Bugenhagen, though, I mean, I mean, in, in a, you know, we're not, in, we're not entirely sure how much he's going like he's talking like literally or like spiritually, but the planet is crying out in pain. And uh, according to him, the planet doesn't have much longer. But of course, we we can also like just think that it, you know, Shinra is uh, expediting expediting process. the process. Thank you. I was looking for that word. Expedia. <laughs> Dot Shinra. <laughs> your grandma will always be with you in your light bulbs. Dot. <laughs> <laughs> Shinra.com Shinra dot yeah Uh oh Mako <laughs> <laughs> I bring Barry with this every time And watch And notice carefully that We'll, we'll, show, we'll see it in the um, Astrology room 1-800 yeah. It's Mako I always bring Barry too Because he 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 loves Cosmo Canyon He loves Cosmo uh, To be fair He loves the idea Of Cosmo yeah. Canyon That's nice. <laughs> I'm gonna go read your stuff. This is their bedroom. We're gonna argue against the bed. Red Thirteen gets the couch. He's like, "Come in." He's changing. Like, "What are you doing? Why are you in here? You told me to come in." To the fuck? To the observatory, you idiot! Not my fucking bedroom. Yeah, that's just for uh, set piece. Nothing there besides like getting a good view. Can you actually imagine having like um a canvas painting of like the. Of Cosmo the, Canyon? Of Cosmo Canyon, like, is sure, I'm that... Sure you, um, I'm pretty sure you can find it in Etsy. Yeah. You know what? I'll look it up. Let me see. Sorry. Nice. The Observatory. Makes you get a gas. The Planetarium. <laughs> ta <-da! laughs> Is this our galaxy? Dodge one 10,000 years, light years away from here. Space. What is she... 
Oh my god, I was hoping you would have brought Tifa. We got another mistake. I was low key one to do that er, for context. <laughs> so I live streamed this game years ago on my Twitch channel, and uh, I was playing it on the Steam uh, version. And I brought, I brought Barrett <laughs> I was and Tifa. Playing it on the Steam. I, uh, yeah, I know. I brought <laughs> Barrett and Tifa with me for this. I think it was Barrett and Tifa anyway. And for some fucking reason, after this cutscene plays here, Tifa suddenly became upside down. Right. <laughs> And she was doing handstands. <laughs> was she walking? I with don't know. Yeah, she was walking upside down, but for a, for a majority of it, she's just stationary. So she's just doing handstands while watching meteors go inside a black hole. No idea why it happened. <laughs> funny as hell, though. Yeah, it was funny. So now we get, we got a very spiritual lesson here with how things work on this planet. Long story short, you die. Life's a bitch, then you die, then you're back in the planet, then you get re put into another life, and then you have to deal with the same shit all over again. What I don't understand exactly is why this game feels the need to bring in two separate entities that are kind of the same thing. Spirit energy and life stream. They are two different things according to this. But aren't they the same? Life stream is the blood of the planet. Spirit. Like the planet need the, the planet runs off live stream, but there's also live stream as a live stream as a giant cong congregation of spirit energy. Am I from my understanding? Uh, from what no, because from what I, what I always took it is that the two were different things, but they do the same thing in reality. Because spirit uh, energy is the smaller thing, live stream is like a mass. Like <laughs> that's what we have the internet for. I guess so. Well, remember the, the internet's like, like yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but the planet runs off this. The blood of the planet is basically the live stream. It's just like this green spiritual energy. But there's also spirit energy, which fuels everything on the planet. Like I think life stream is just like in, in relation to human. Anything, or, anything organic right. on the planet without it being the planet itself. Maybe. Yeah. You can totally look at it that way. But the planet itself runs and off live stream. And I am bugged the fuck wrong. Oh, never mind. It, you were right. Life stream, also known as spiritual energy. Oh, so they do the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so I guess for this translation, they just kind of interchange between the two. Because right. Because they, they make it a habit to call something spirit energy, and then there's also just life stream. But if they're both of the same thing, then whatever. You blew up the planet, Barbara. Uh, it's a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> yeah, what if he's like Brainiac and he just Where'd killed the... What if he just killed the bottle city? Yeah, I have no idea why I focus on the, uh, <laughs> the FMV bugged out there. Yeah, what if he's like Brainiac and he like bottle cities and he just killed one for a demonstration? God oh, no. damn. Th that's a big old yikes. Yeah, this is, but Bugenhaga is going into pretty much anything that Barrett already kind of told us about, where, you know, he's not, like, Barrett wasn't talking out of his ass. Right. Uh, Shinra is hurting the planet because they're taking spirit energy or life stream. But here's the thing Bugenhagen actually shows us a deep in our understanding of it. Barrett's really just using it as a excuse, excuse. to beat the shit out of things. Yes. Or rather but there is merit to his words, though, yeah. as Bugenhagen is demonstrating. You know, everything runs off the spirit. Everything runs off spirit energy, the live stream. And Shinra, what their their practices, they harness that live stream and be, they make Mako reactors out of it. Mako energy, basically, it's like the, the unlike game, renewable the, energy of that. Mako energy just takes it, and then that's it. That's it. It doesn't replenish anything. Right. It's not Which recyclable. It's not, exactly. It's not biodegradable. <laughs> My grandfather is biodegradable. <laughs> Fuck. No, but Mako energy is not. That was my grandfather. Shouldn't he be biodegradable energy? You see, I always took that uh, Mako energy is is spirit energy refined, but it removes like it strips away all the life essence. Now it's just raw power that powers up your light bulb. Yeah, but it also shut up, Grandpa. Planet. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching your masturbate, Jim. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to fight off the virus. Two <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah, bonfire. Like Red 13 is like, this is nothing. I kind of tip my tail. Which you never see, like in the, the, the 3D model of Red 13. His tail is technically on fire at all times. It's like Charmander. Fucking metal. Okay, so that's the fire. Okay. It depends upon which one of these you talk to that you end up getting. When you sit next to them, you'll get a cutscene like this. Yeah, you'll get it for Aerith, Tifa, and Barrett. No, no, uh, you'll get it for Red, um, your Red 13. That's right. Barrett does go into a bit of detail, though, with. Uh, He's avalanche's kinda, birth. Yeah, Avalanche's birth. Or rather, uh, second in birth. Reminiscing about Jesse Biggs and Wedge. It all started with an idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it all started with an idea. I got a gun on my arm. Then I had another idea. 
I shot the so anyway, I started blasting them. <laughs> Biggs, Jesse, Badger, <laughs> Skinny Pete, <laughs> Little Mo with the gimpy leg. <laughs> So Barrett has a new goal, so to speak, and that is basically he's just going to keep doing what the fuck he's been doing. Way yeah, to go. I know. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. What's up, Tifers? <laughs> Tifers. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Tief? <laughs> Are you trying to say teeth, but with an F? Shut up, Ketchy. <laughs> Bonfires are funny, aren't they? Yeah, it's not my type of comedian. This person, I don't know. <laughs> you know, if you look really hard at the bonfire, you can see Richard Pryor. <laughs> oh my God, man! <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know, he dipped his last cookie in his milk. Yeah. No, keep it moving. It'll take him to one hundred and forty-three. You know, bon. <laughs> you know, bonfires are as funny as salads. <laughs> because whenever, whenever someone has a salad, they're laughing. What joke is it telling? That's only for us salad havers, Elliot. You don't get to know the joke. If you if you look through if you actually look in the fire, you see Bill Cosby's career burning. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you good? <laughs> no, it's the Richard Pryor thing coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing the, I keep hearing the audio from the fire. I keep, yeah. I gotta remember like, oh it's the fire. Yeah, it's it's fine. Bring, I don't think I like bring Barrett with me on I this. don't think the the ports of seven have audio issues. They really don't. I mean, besides music cutting in and out, <laughs> I, the, that flashback later down this game is going to be really interesting if it fucks the music up. I'm going to hate this port if it does. <laughs> the way, um, I'm surprised you brought uh, Aerith. I usually bring either Barrett or Goofy. Uh, I've got two enemy skills. See you guys next time.